Okay, Olive. I'm feeling a little down. I was back in the OR today, helping with a hernia operation. They asked me to take a clampy thing off something, but I took it off too fast and there was a lot of bleeding. The surgeon was pretty upset. I hate it when that happens. I know, right? It was a bit scary, actually. What's wrong with the little bleeding anyways? You guys said it's okay to spill a little bit of blood, right? You should be scared of bleeding. Remember I said infection is enemy number one. Well, bleeding is enemy number two. Surgeons really hate bleeding. It keeps us up at night. It can come out of nowhere and complicate even the most routine surgery. And if you don't know how to control it, you risk losing your patient. Sorry, Dr. Scalpel. How can I avoid messing up next time? First things first. Surgeons have to know their anatomy. You should know where you are at all times during an operation, and you should know where the nearest big vessels are. If you aren't 100% sure what's what, just take it slow and keep working until you've got the anatomy straight. If you don't know what something is, you shouldn't ever just cut it to find out. Gosh, that sounds serious. Bleeding is a serious matter, Alex. We're playing for keeps here. You have to get control and then ligate the vessel. Figure out what vessel it is and what it's supplying. Okay, I get it. Okay, now let's talk about how we use clamps to control blood vessels. Clamps or hemostatic forceps are a kind of tissue forcep. We have some here. Just like other tissue forceps, they look a bit like scissors. We use them to clamp and crush tissue in preparation for tying it off. The main difference is when you're using tissue forceps, you're just grabbing tissues with the tip. But when you're using a clamp, you're using the whole length of the instrument to crush the vessel. When I was in the OR, they had lots of different sorts of clamps. It was a bit confusing. Yeah, there are a bunch of different ones. Clamps can be straight or curved or right angled, and they can be long or short. Some of them are small and fine like snaps. Others are bigger, like Kelly's or Robert's. The mixtures have a right angle. Even bigger is something like a Carmel or a Gary Grant. How do you hold a clamp? Hold your clamp the same way you would hold a pair of scissors or tissue forceps. Put your thumb in one hole and your ring finger in the other. Use your index finger to steady the instrument and you're good to go. Okay, I get it. So we just clamp the vessels off and cut them. It doesn't look that hard. <sighs> it's not easy, so we have to be careful. We have to get proximal and distal control from where we're about to clamp. The proximal upstream end is the side of the vessel which is coming out of the heart, and the distal end is downstream. We'll often make a little hole or a window in the tissue on either side of the vessel to give us space to put the clamp on. We want to be close enough to the vessel to see it properly, but we don't want to make it bleed. Once you're ready, put your clamps on good and solid to stop the flow. Open that clamp up and slide it into place around the vessel. I usually put two clamps on the upstream end, just for safety's sake. I use something good and solid like the caramels. Okay, once your clamps are on good and tight, we can cut the vessel. If your clamps are solid, there won't be any fresh bleeding. Now we take a heavy suture freehand, pass it around each clamp one at a time, and tie the vessel off. You also can suture ligate the vessel, putting a stitch through the end of the vessel to stop it slipping off. Taking the clamp off can be tricky because two things have to happen at once. As the surgeon tightens the knot around the vessel, the assistant has to loosen the clamp and then gently slide it out of the way. Normally, the surgeon will tighten up the suture and then say off, which is your cue to remove the clamp. You have to get smooth at this. Too slow and you'll get in the way of the knot. Too fast or rough and you'll injure the vessel. Just gently open up the clamp, make sure it's completely free, and then smoothly slip it out. Take your time on this step. If your ties slip off or you injure the vessel above the clamp, it'll really bleed. 
so make sure you tie it secure. These clampy things are tricky. Yes, indeedy. Once your ties are on, take a good look and make sure you have control. You have to make sure there's no bleeding. Check once, check twice, check three times, and then move on to the next step in the surgery. Wow, there's a lot more to the surgery gig than they show on Grey's Anatomy. Yupper! You know, I don't even watch that show. It's not realistic enough. Seattle Grace. <laughs> right, so what have we learned today, young Jedi? Okay, let me see. Number one, bleeding is serious. Never joke about it. Number two, know your vascular anatomy. Number three, clamps are for controlling blood vessels. Number four, use the whole length of the clamp to control the tissue, not just the tip. Number five, pick the right clamp for the right surgery. Number six, isolate the vessel, then clamp, cut, and tie. Number seven, be careful when taking the clamp off. Number eight, don't forget to check for bleeding. I think she's getting it, boss. I do believe she is, Thumbs. We'll make a surgeon of her yet. Now, let's hit the surgeon's lounge. Someone told me there were free cookies today.